Palin, the former vice presidential candidate, former governor, fine state of Alaska. Governor, what do you think? Well, I think that uh, President Obama certainly showed his desperation tonight with not only his mannerisms, with all of his interruptions and, and um, seemingly uh, angered responses, but his false charges. It's, it, and he's trying to make up for lost ground, of course, because the president's lies are catching up with him. And, Neil, it's unfortunate that Governor Romney didn't have enough time to answer all the false charges. You know, I made a couple pages uh, of a list of the false charges, and I'm sure that you in the world of the media will be discussing those the next couple of days. But it, first and foremost, I was looking forward to this debate because uh, to me, well, I'll, I'll dismiss the notion that a foreign policy slash national, national security debate is any less important than an economic policy debate. And I guess it's the mama grizzly in me that comes out when I think about my son overseas in a war zone. And I think how offensive it is that our own president would claim to be using our military troops to fight and die on, quote, his behalf, unquote, and yet be willing to throw them under the bus to hold their paychecks hostage until he gets his way with Congress to increase the nation's debt, that he would have a problem with our military troops being able to vote conveniently in a war zone, that he would claim that sequestration wasn't his fault. He signed it into law, and now he says it's not going to happen, and it's going to... By the to, way, we're, we're uh, hearing, we're hearing Governor, from, from Mitch McConnell's office and John Boehner's office, you know, hold on, Sparky, I'm paraphrasing here, and trivializing it. You, you can't just dismiss the sequestration thing. I mean, it is a co-creature of Democrats and, and Republicans. That has gotten their offices saying, what did he say again? So, so uh, now it's going to lead to a separate debate as to whether the president, with a, with a swipe of the hand, can, can, can remove a, what I call the backup backbone in Washington to force cuts if, if Congress and the president can't agree to them. So for him to divorce himself from that uh, struck me as a little odd. Well, absolutely. So for him to point the finger and say it's Congress's fault and it's not going to happen, he signed it into law. What? Through, through right, right. Fiat? Somehow he, he's going to not allow this to happen. Now, this is going to uh, equate to a, a trillion dollar cut in our national defense, in our military budget. And yet he says that his plan doesn't include cuts to military funding. That's not true. And the media needs to start calling him out on the blatant lies that he gets. Again, I have a list of them, but I, I don't but like you know, it Governor, I, I, a, a couple of you, you the, raise a couple of examples. say that these are just untruths. Mm -hmm. Right. You raise a couple of examples, Governor. But, you know, I thought, well, where is Mitt Romney to respond more aggressively to that? On Libya again, I thought this was his night to really clarify Benghazi. What did you know, Mr. President? When did you know it? Another night where that opportunity to slip by or, or the president didn't force it. On the drone uh, question, uh, you would think that the governor would bring up the fact Yes, I believe in drone technology. It was a drone that was over Benghazi when this attack was, was developing and these crowds were growing. And you ignored that, that drone warning. You ignored that, Mr. President. But, but again, either it, may, it could be the nerves of the night. You've been through this. You know this process far better than I do, Governor. But it seemed like uh, Governor Romney let those big opportunities, almost like big old foreign policy softballs, go right over the plate. And he didn't hit them. That is why it is so important for those common sense constitutionalists who do care about our foreign policy, our national security, to start answering those false charges because Romney didn't have time. Obama is the master at spewing uh, untruth upon untruth in these charges, knowing that he keeps throwing things at the refrigerator and something's going to stick. And Romney, again, did not have time to answer all the charges. It's important for constitutional conservatives to kind of make up for that lack of aggressive answer back from Romney and that in the next 16 days we start answering the false charges for one the charge that Romney or that Obama made that our alliances our relationships with those across the globe are better today than ever since when including Israel he had the nerve to claim since when so surrogates are going to have to do the job well I, I didn't hear that either I was a little surprised at that but maybe in the end you know, many people say that it, it, it gave the impression of Mitt Romney trying to not risk anything to jeopardize a lead or momentum that he has. That say what you will of last week's debate, uh, Governor, and I know you and I, I think we're chatting at the time about how, you know, you could 
cut that one both ways, but uh, that maybe the president had the better part of him that night, and we'd see it in the polls. Now, we have not seen it in the polls. If anything, Mitt Romney has widened his lead. So I think it presented a conundrum for the president tonight to be more aggressive, I think over-the-top aggressive, um, and I think it might come back to bite him. So even if you would argue he won this debate on, on points or some one-liners, and believe me, I'm, I'm always wrong on this. I have no idea how this will ultimately be graded. But I, I, I think he, he risked a lot with his demeanor, the anger, the, anger, the, the constant interruptions, the, the Joe Biden type of ways he, he went about this that might have been his trying to reclaim the offensive. But I kept trying to think, you know, you are the president. And I, I don't know, it, it, it didn't seem presidential. Your thoughts? No, and I, th I think Romney came across much more presidential. He's not petulant. He's not um, self-centered when it comes to talking about his record and when it comes to um, giving credit where credit is due, whereas obviously o Obama is, is a very self-centered politician who wants to blame everybody but himself when something goes wrong. And you saw a lot of that tonight. No, Romney, I think, came across as um, taking the high road. Uh, my nature would be, you know, to come back swinging on some of those points <laughs> and to interrupt Obama to make a point because Romney ha or Obama has that as a practice to interrupt. And, um, you know, the moderator allowed him to keep interrupting. But, um, no, I think Romney came across as much more presidential. That's very interesting. Yeah, the interruption thing. I mean, it's, it could cut both ways, but I kept thinking, you both candidates, there was a chance to do that even more. Obviously, the president took advantage of it aggressively. Real quickly, Governor, before I let you go, the economy didn't come up until a half hour into this. That's when, obviously, Governor Romney started uh, weaving that into this whole idea of national security. Our, our security is compromised with $60 trillion in debt, this ongoing fiscal cliff. Only then did he seem to hit his stride. Did he wait too long? Is a half hour too long? Um, you know, they all, both of them waited too long to even bring up the idea of energy independence. And that has so much to do with our security, our prosperity, and America's opportunity to be, be the exceptional nation that we know we can be. So that's unfortunate. Right. Glad that Romney did weave in the economic uh, issues that need to be discussed. But both of them missed the point on energy independence again. Yeah, yeah, a lot of missed opportunities on both counts. Uh, Governor Palin, always a pleasure. Thank you very, very much. Um, 